Buying or selling a used car can be an emotional or bittersweet journey, especially if it is your first one. And the process can leave you exhausted. With the uncertainty, risk and paperwork involved, it can turn out to be quite an ordeal, despite the number of car dealers and platforms that can help orchestrate it for you. Can there be a solution to ease the pain, right from your first search to your front door? On this episode of Disruptor Dialogues, we get up to speed with the man in the driver's seat, Neeraj Singh, founder and CEO of Spinny. So buckle up to understand what it takes to spin success in the used car market. So Neeraj, thanks so much for your time on Disruptor Dialogues. Great to be here at your headquarters. Thanks, Shivani. Thanks a lot for coming here and uh, you know capturing us. Would you say that your twist with Spinny has uh, been a case of you know? a third time working its charm because it's interesting that as a founder this is your third startup and you entered a space which is uh, you know fairly crowded had pretty big competitors in the space of used cars why you know after failing in uh, two startups uh, when i was contemplating the third one which is spinny i was very clear that uh, this time i want to do something for the long term and out of that long term engagement whatever i want to build i want to build for decades mm -hmm. and if you want to build something for long term Right, then you need to solve something which is like really very important for people, really important, really meaningful. And if you look at the car buying, mm -hmm. so especially the used car buying, right? So for anybody, right, car buying is a especially the first car buying is a very special and aspirational purchase, right? So when you start earning after your studies and all, mm -hmm. the first thing you plan to start buying is you're buying your own car. Yeah. Then when you start doing uh, professionally better, then you buy maybe a better car, you get married, you buy a house. Mm -hmm. So buying your first car is like one of the three, four key purchases you do in your life. And uh, when you are buying uh, your first car, you are relatively younger and uh, early in your career. So you have a limited budget. But in that budget, in that limited budget, you want to buy something, you know, which really matches your aspirations. Mm -hmm. So hence you start looking out for options in second and car market also. But the purchase remains very special and important for you and you have a very high expectations from that purchase mm -hmm. and the way people used to be treated in the market was exactly opposite mm -hmm. so this was very clear that uh, this is a very special and important purchase for people but completely broken mm -hmm. so if we go after this problem statement then of course size of the opportunity is big it's further growing mm -hmm. but uh, because of the speciality of the purchase if we do it right mm -hmm. then we can create a very special place in people's hearts You've also always said that, you know, trust is the core problem here. Yeah. Uh, so what have you done differently to address that uh, challenge compared to your peers? How is your model different? We always took the customer first approach, right? And uh, that is the reason we still decided to go ahead in spite of category being uh, overcrowded and overfunded. Mm -hmm. So we were very clear that, you know, it's an important purchase, but completely broken. So we will take a customer first approach and uh, we will not we will not take any kinds of shortcuts mm -hmm. that what is easier to execute, where it will be easier to show some early traction and, you know, raise funding easily. Mm -hmm. So we, we didn't get into that kind of trap, right? We always took a customer first approach that what what is the problem customers are facing in the market and how that should be solved, what is the right way to solve their problem, whether that means a full stack approach, whether that means building a heavy presence on the ground and building uh, capabilities around evaluating the car, fixing the cars, building all kind of capabilities mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, selling the cars with uh, with a short, you know, quality, you know. So, so that is the kind of uh, approach we took and uh, we had to do lots of solutioning mm -hmm. to ensure that the problems that the people are facing around, around the transparency, around quality of the car, around the history of the car, uh, fair pricing, full accountability, mm -hmm. and the seamlessness in the entire purchase, so all of that is taken care. Sure, like you mentioned, you know, you had to sort of build all those capabilities ground up. How tricky uh, was it and how have you managed to put all these pieces to work in sync from buying, refurbishing, uh, you know, giving a fixed price? So we took a basically demand first approach. So all the capabilities that needed to be built, mm -hmm. we were realizing from the day one that mm -hmm. it will be a long journey mm -hmm. and a very slow and rigorous grinding in the beginning mm -hmm. and we were fine with that mm -hmm. so for an example uh, in our early days right mm -hmm. we were not uh, evaluating cars older than five six years okay. because we, because the capability required mm -hmm. to evaluate a three-year-old car mm -hmm. versus the capability required to evaluate 
seven years, seven years, eight years, mm -hmm. old car is totally different. Mm -hmm. The capability required to refurbish a three years old car versus the capability required to refurbish a nine years old car yeah, is totally yeah. different. Mm -hmm. So we we approached in a phased wise manner, mm -hmm. right? With the time, our capability you know basically kept growing, and uh, and with that, we basically solved our coverage in a phased wise manner. Uh, so the other key aspect of course here is pricing and uh, you know you say that you offer a fixed a uh, fair price so if you can take me through the intricacies of how exactly you go about doing this what are the market uh, trends or some data that you look at and do you think this has been one of the disruptive things that you have done offering yeah. this fair price shwani i think uh, this is one of the most disruptive things we have done in the market mm. we are very clear we have mm. to make this uh, used car buying like as confident as seamless and as you know fearless as buying a new car mm. right and if there are negotiations then the there is a the, that's a very high friction process yeah. right so we wanted it to be a like really confident and straightforward process and without a fixed pricing model that is not possible mm -hmm. we decided that if people like us coming to this category this market then there should be some transformational changes and there was a risk because even while buying a new car, mm. there are lots of you know negotiations and haggling. True. So mm. forget the used cars. So if so, when we were like you know discussing this that we should follow a fixed pricing mm -hmm. approach, mm -hmm. there was a fear that you know that our sales numbers won't pick up and and like that, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, we were very clear that if we are not able to bring this kind of transformation or change in the market, then there is no point for people like us coming to this category. So to arrive at any particular price, what is the right price for a seller? What is the right price for a buyer? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of data science and algorithms and all our like cumulative knowledge, you know, working in the background. Mm -hmm. So that is about arriving at any particular price. Mm -hmm. But uh, operating with the fixed pricing model is, is a basically is a conscious call. Whatever basically best price can be offered to any particular buyer on our platform, it should be like accessible to everybody. It should not be subject to anybody's negotiations or haggling skills. So best possible deal should be available to everybody in a very straightforward mm -hmm. manner, right? And was it easy to sort of uh, roll this out? You know, how did customers take it? That's a very interesting journey. Mm -hmm. So till uh, late 2019, mm -hmm. uh, we were not operating with the fixed pricing model. And uh, around October, November 2019, we were going live in Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. And uh, till that time we were live only in uh, Delhi and Bangalore. Mm -hmm. So we thought that uh, there is no risk uh, of losing sales in Hyderabad. So, so since day one, we should go live with the fixed pricing model and let's see how the market reacts. And if the market is supportive, then we can start implementing it in other cities also. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Hyderabad, the people really supported us. That became our biggest differentiator with, with the existing options in the market. So we started appealing a lot to certain cohorts of customers mm -hmm. who wanted a like you know straightforward and and confident decision making process. Mm -hmm. Since the beginning of 2020, mm -hmm. the entire platform started operating with the fixed pricing approach. Okay, great. Yeah. And uh, you know now since we've seen yeah. this evolution happening as well, what really matters the most? Is it pricing? Is it the car conditions and history? What matters more to people now? It's not like that. Everybody is uh, hunting for a deal, mm -hmm. right? That mm -hmm. comes later. Right, it's important purchase. It's uh, basically you know, uh, it's not just about aspiration and experience. Mm. It's also about safety and well-being of the family. The whole family travels in that car. What happens if the car like catches fire on the road? What happens if mm. the car stops on highway and peaks yeah. somewhere and there are mm. kids in the car? Yeah. Right. So yeah. it's also about well-being of the mm. family. Mm. So people really need to be fully assured about the quality, the performance, and the accountability. In, in, in the transaction process. Then only they start thinking about the deal and all, right? Mm -hmm. So people are very, uh, they, they approach in a very, you know, rational way and uh, they are willing to pay a fair price. Mm -hmm. in, in some cases, they are willing to pay some premium also. Mm -hmm if the quality and experience and accountability performance are like table stakes. So even on the customer front, uh, there are so many options out there in the market. They compare a lot of platforms when they actually make this decision to buy or sell a car. And when you look at the nature of this purchase, it's not really an often, uh, you know, it's like a non-repeat purchase. It's a high value purchase. Uh, so in terms of your cost of customer acquisition, does that put pressure on your cost of customer acquisition? How does it really work in a business like this where uh, you know, how do you hook them onto your value prop? So, you know, non-repeat uh, uh, 
non repeat nature of the transaction is mm -hmm. compensated by very high uh, reference rates mm -hmm. because again the purchase is like important and special mm -hmm. so if anything goes wrong then uh, people will uh, block many customers coming to you but if everything is perfect then they will keep sending more and more customers your way mm -hmm. right so initially we used to say that it's a reference category with the time you know <coughs> we we arrived at a conclusion that it's a reference plus ref check category mm -hmm. first you build uh, those capabilities that allow you to deliver quality and experience and if you keep delivering quality and experience then you will keep getting more and more references once you start doing like aggressive marketing or things like that then by doing marketing uh, people will get to know about you but just because of your marketing they will not start buying from you because of the nature of the purchase so but once they get to know about you they will start doing ref checks in their network mm -hmm. so it's a reference plus ref check category mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and high reference rates compensates for the non repeat uh, nature of the purchase sure but in terms of a percentage how much percentage do you get through referrals very uh, hard to measure the exact number mm -hmm. but uh, close to 35 to 40% is mm -hmm. reference mm -hmm. but i'll give you a different data point mm -hmm. right uh, 85 to 90% of the transactions mm -hmm. on the platform mm -hmm. are basically direct and uh, organic transactions mm -hmm. so only you know only 10 to 15% is basically inorganic uh, paid transactions on the platform on the retail platform you've also had a very uh, interesting you know growth uh, journey you sort of uh, address the market in a crowded space but you've managed to create your own niche uh, initially it was you know slow and steady and then we've seen uh, growth over the past um, you know 3 years i think fy 21 to 23 we saw almost 30x growth even in terms of car sales and it reflected on your revenue as well what do you think is the big decision or pivot that you made to put you on that high growth path so we started uh, in uh, late 2015 mm -hmm. and we raised our series a round of funding in uh, april 2019 so for almost 4 uh, years right we were just busy building our foundation the kind of capabilities we talked about mm -hmm. we were just busy building those capabilities doing multiple iterations and perfecting those capabilities mm -hmm. so mid 19 we started pressing the growth bed and uh, throughout 19 uh, and uh, early 20 we saw decent growth mm -hmm. we we started many new markets also of course that was uh, paused uh, for for a few months uh, when the first covid lockdown came in 2020 but immediately after the first uh, covid lockdown we resumed our growth trajectory yeah. many new people were like willing to buy many families wanted more cars in the family yeah. many people were not owning a car they wanted to own a car immediately mm -hmm. so covid was a big tailwind for the used car market and the overall car market but but the new car market was seeing uh, supply chain issues mm -hmm. and by that time we had established a reputation for ourselves mm -hmm. so people started flocking and rallying behind mm -hmm. us like anything mm -hmm. and we started seeing huge growth mm -hmm. at that moment sure you know on the flip side i, I guess with any uh, you know high growth focused startups also that we've seen uh, there are a lot of losses as well unit economics becomes key uh, what are you doing uh, to really uh, tackle this and if you could uh, share with me or um, you know do you have a clear line of sight towards profitability we have always uh, built uh, uh, frugally so before 2019 uh, you know Uh, we were almost profitable because we didn't had access to any funding mm. so we were managing everything on our own mm. but uh, 2019 2020 and 2021 mm. we are on a very high growth trajectory and uh, given that the you know foundation was already there and uh, customer goodwill was already there so focus was on to you know cover capture more and more market share mm -hmm. so throughout 2019 2020 2021 21 right while uh, maintaining certain kind of sanity on the gross margin sides and the cost structure side there was a uh, there was a heavy focus on growth and there was a lot of uh, marketing spending also especially on the digital and performance side and 2022 onwards we started focusing again on the break even and unit economics mm. so it is uh, back in fully control mm. at the moment our uh, uh, ebitda burn is in a mid single digit and uh, we are very confident of becoming uh, profitable at an overall business level or next uh, 9 to 10 months at at max 10 to 12 months and uh, many of our uh, older markets are already break even 
operating at a very close to our steady state unit mm. economics assumptions. Okay, that's great. Now, uh, looking at the uh, revenue model, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward when you look at it. Um, Spinny refurbishes the car and then sells it, say, at a, at a markup or, you know, at a fair price there. So, what really are the margins uh, and how, how does that really work? So, so that is the model we follow. So, mm. we buy it and uh, we sell it after mm. refurbishment uh, for a margin. Uh, we have not disclosed our margins mm. in uh, public domain mm. yet. So, yeah. And uh, other than that, uh, we earn revenue from uh, financing also, insurance also. Sure. Very soon we will start a uh, few other services also. We have started uh, preparing for our NBFC operations. Okay. May this year, mm. we received our NBFC license from RBI. Mm. And uh, very soon uh, we will go live with our uh, NBFC operations. Okay. Yeah. You also have a two-pronged strategy in terms of uh, you know the retail division, and then uh, you also have a, we have two a B2B platforms. B2B we have yeah, two auction platforms. Model. So hmm. basically, we have a retail platform, and uh, we have a B2B auction platform hmm. also. Hmm. So on retail platform, buyers are uh, uh, individual buyers. And uh, on B2B auction platform, uh, buyers are uh, used car dealers. Uh, let's understand the scale of operations as well, you know, and the number of uh, car right. sales you facilitate. Uh, if you can take me through some of those key metrics or numbers uh, overall in terms of your service history and, you know, the overall sales that have happened as well. So at the moment, uh, you know, we are selling a uh, little more than 5,000 cars uh, mm. uh, on our retail platform mm. and uh, close to 5,000 cars on our uh, B2B auction platform also. So, net-net mm -hmm. overall, we are very close to 10,000 cars a month. And uh, cumulatively, uh, so far, we have sold uh, more than uh, 2 lakhs uh, cars on our, uh, on our basically platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, when you look at expansion also, uh, you know, would you say that you've been cruising in a sense, not really, you know, pressing on the accelerator? Is this a conscious decision? Because we see a lot of peers, you know, in a lot of tier two cities going international. Was this a conscious decision that you Yes, took? yes, it was hmm. a conscious choice. Hmm. So we want to be like very mindful with our execution and uh, especially when it comes to geographical expansion, we don't want to operate in cities where hmm. we don't have enough confidence about the depth of the market. Okay. So most of the opportunities in uh, top 15 cities. So we want to establish ourselves uh, properly in the top 15 cities first. Have disproportionate share of the market in the in, in this top 15 cities. So we are in that process at the moment. It's refreshing to see this stance, you know, taking a slow and steady approach and uh, these calculated decisions. You know, we really believe in the you know power of compounding. Sure. And uh, it has really worked for us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we, we, we remain a believer in that. Yeah. So, even in terms of, you know, establishing your brand, I think you've sort of invested, um, you know, quite a good amount on that front as well. You have some heavyweight uh, brand ambassador, Sachin Tendulkar is an investor and he also leads the squad in terms of, you know, yeah. all the sports people that you have associated with you. Uh, so, how would you say your, uh, you know, big campaigns like uh, Khushiyo Ke Long Drive and Go Far have really given you that kind of ROI? Uh, you know, the Go Far campaign uh, really worked very well for us mm -hmm. and uh, having backing of uh, SRT is, is again very helpful. Mm -hmm. So the Spinney's awareness before that moment versus, you know, after that moment mm -hmm. is completely different altogether. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, and, and for, for customers also, it, it's, uh, it, it's very helpful in their decision making process if you have, uh, you know, yeah. backing of somebody like Sachin Tendulkar. We, Operate with a certain empathy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we would want to operate, uh, keep operating that way only. So it's not just about buying and selling cars. It's more about underlying emotions and aspiration and our ability to relate with that mm -hmm. and willingness, willingness to do anything to you know solve for that. Great, Neeraj, you know, you've led Spinny uh, through a very challenging uh, journey and taken the road less travelled uh, in a competitive space. Uh, also, you know, I uh, want to understand the customer experience on the ground. Yeah, why not? Uh, let's go to one of Spinny car ups in Gurgaon and let's see everything first time.
So we're here at one of the spinny car hubs in Gurgaon to get a real feel of the customer experience. And Neeraj, you know, I see uh, two cars here, pre-loved, pre-owned, but now booked and ready to be delivered. That is the idea of a spinny, that people mm. should be able to buy even used cars with same level of confidence and same level of excitement mm. with which they would have purchased a new car. Right. So we are trying to bring used car optionality also at par with new car optionality. Mm. Right. So we really since sincerely work towards making every car perfect so that people are able to get good quality and at the same time the transaction process the overall buying process mm -hmm. is so seamless okay. yeah, so that we are able to make it uh, experience rich also sure yeah. uh, and even in your in terms of experience uh, you follow a digital model yes uh, you know so you have online yeah. they either get to choose and get uh, you know like a test drive at right. home or come to these experience centers and retail hubs. Yeah. The platform so, is, yeah. uh, you know, fully uh, equipped uh, mm. for pure, pure online transactions also. So mm -hmm. if you want, you can complete your entire purchase entirely online. Mm -hmm. But that is not, uh, you know, most of the people transact, right? So at the moment, only six to seven percent of the total transactions are purely online. Okay. But most of the transactions, right, 93, 94 percent transactions mm -hmm. are basically physical in nature. Okay. So the engagement starts online. People go to the online platform. Mm -hmm. All cars are listed there with all mm -hmm. possible details mm -hmm. to help you make a fully informed decision. And once you have made up your mind for any particular car, then you book the car online. And after that, either you can uh, request for door step test drive or you can schedule a visit to one of our car centers mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. so we call these centers spinny car hubs. So the engagement starts online, you shortlist the car, you book the car, mm -hmm. and then either you, you know, request the car at your doorstep for test drive, or sure. you visit one of the spinny car hubs for the yeah. test drive of the car. If you like everything, then uh, you go ahead with the transaction. It's a one-stop solution for every customer. Yeah. So under the same roof, you get everything. Mm -hmm. So of course the car, if you want financing, then car financing also, insurance renewal, yeah. title transfer, mm -hmm. and every car comes with a mm -hmm. free warranty and uh, and services like that. All the transactions where the engagement is physical kind of, mm -hmm. basically 93 to 94% of the overall sales done on our platform. Yeah. So out of that, uh, close to 55 to 60% is through spinny car hubs. Okay. Right. And, uh, and and rest uh, are basically doorstep delivery. We see a large number of cars here. If you can give me a sense of the demand also in terms of, you know, uh, what is the, uh, you buy the car uh, on one end. Uh, so what is the inventory holding time before you, you know, you sort of sell it further down the line? You know, our basically uh, working capital, working days, working capital days requirements are close to 24, 25. Hmm. Right. So, so that is the kind of, you know, and and that is our like ideal aspiration also. Okay. It used to be uh, very high hmm. some time ago, but with the time we have been able to bring it closer to our like ideal aspiration. Sure. So we're seeing demand picking up. If you can tell me, you know, what sort of uh, price bracket is that in? Is it largely the mass market uh, price bracket? What is the purchase uh, budget? You know, uh, if you look at the average selling price hmm. for the overall Indian used car market. Mm -hmm. So that is around 4.3, 4.4 lakhs okay. rupees. Mm -hmm. On our platform, average uh, selling price is close to 6 lakhs okay. because we are dealing in relatively better quality cars. Mm -hmm. So relatively better quality, relatively newer cars. So hence the like average selling price is higher than what you see in the market. Yeah, you had, you know, different uh, categories like Spinny Max and Truebill, the value one and Spinny Max, the luxury one, you brought that under one roof. Yeah. Has that helped, you know, in increasing the average selling price? So as I told you, our average selling price is uh, six lakhs, mm. right? So, so, but that does not mean that we are selling cars only mm. around six lakhs. Right? Okay. So from two lakhs to two and a half lakhs, mm -hmm. it goes up to like you know, 14, 15 lakhs. Mm -hmm. In case of a spinny max, it goes up to then 40, 45 lakhs. Okay. And in some cases, even 50 lakhs. Mm -hmm. But the highest selling, basically, you know, models are mm -hmm. priced around, you know, five to seven and a half lakhs. Okay. So that is the price range mm -hmm. where most of the transactions are happening okay. on our platform. You know, even in terms of which city do you feel the highest demand is coming from? Where is that? You know, our top four, top five cities, uh, uh, remain the basically you know largest contributor to our overall traction. Mm -hmm. So Delhi was our first city. We went live with Delhi. Then mm -hmm. we started Bangalore. Mm -hmm. So and after Bangalore we went to uh, Hyderabad and then we went to Pune. So these four cities are basically our uh, oldest uh, markets. Sure, sure. So, and then we call these cities cohort one markets. Mm -hmm. So close to 60% uh, of the total volume 
comes from uh, these four cities. Okay. And uh, then the next uh, set of cities which contribute significantly to overall volumes mm -hmm. is uh, Bombay, Chennai, Ahmedabad, and uh, yeah. Okay. Jesse, I see like you know those QR codes on uh, a lot of the cars. What is uh, that? So, you know, this is to help people who are like direct walk into hmm. these facilities. Mm -hmm. If you have done your uh, research online yeah. and you have gone through all the details of any particular car, then of course you have those details and you have those details in your phone also. Mm -hmm. But there are some people who walk in directly to these facilities. Yeah. So with the time, the awareness is spreading. Mm -hmm. Mainly people know that SPNE operates such kinds of facilities and there are lots of direct walk-ins sure. who have not done any homework or any online research mm -hmm. about the cars available on the platform. Mm -hmm. So it's for them to assist them. Okay. So by scanning the you know car detail page will mm -hmm. open on your mobile phone okay. and you can go through all the details of the car like mm -hmm. current quality, our 200 point inspection report okay. and the exact history of the car, the pricing of the car okay. and all other various other tools you mm -hmm. know needed to help you make up a basically make a full informed decision. So, sure. yeah, so it's about that. Okay. Uh, and uh, when you look at, you know, your uh, customer demographics or any interesting data, uh, consumer shift in behavior or trends, or, you know, uh, about women sort of yeah. buying more cars for themselves, what is the data that you're picking up? You know, in uh, the data that, uh, the, the basically transaction data that we see on our platform, uh, close to 30% uh, bias are women bias. Oh, wow. And that is something which we are, which we are really proud of. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it, it was a kind of a stereotype that if a woman is like, if a lady is trying to buy a car, then yeah. maybe she needs uh, help uh, from other male family yeah, members, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we are clearly breaking that mm -hmm. stereotype, mm -hmm. right? So women are feeling safe to transact with us. Yeah. They are trusting uh, our transaction methods. Mm -hmm. They are trusting the kind of quality that we are offering. Mm -hmm. So all of that is really helping them. Everybody does not need to be a car expert to buy a quality car. Yeah, so yeah. we are providing that, you know, mm -hmm. that optionality to everyone. Nice to see this impact, you know, even at a gender level that you've managed to make. Uh, now, when it comes to, you know, the favorites, what is the hottest selling model uh, or, you know, the longest standing favorite uh, what moves really fast right now? The Swift, the i20, mm. i20 mm. Elite, uh, okay. uh, Tata, Nixon. Mm. So these cars are like, you know, really fast for it. So nowadays, there is a lot of shift mm. towards entry level SUVs. Mm. So many and many, many, many more people are wanting to have SUVs. Maybe yeah. because of the road conditions, mm -hmm. and maybe, you know, basically to meet all kinds of basically use cases, yeah, right, yeah. whether it's a long drive or city mm, drive mm, or a bad condition in the road mm. or maybe, you know, with lots of stuff and, and, and kids going on a trip. So, mm. so SUV basically, you know, caters to lots of different, different use cases. So because of that, there is a massive shift towards the SUVs. We have seen, so entry level hatchback, again, mm. uh, remains our favorite. Yeah. But uh, if you talk about sedan versus SUV, mm. so in recent times, we have seen that a lot of people are moving from sedans to SUVs. SUVs. Okay, yeah. interesting. Uh, now, when you look at uh, you know the used car market, uh, it's ripe for consolidation in India. Uh, I know that you said you know you're moving slowly, a conscious decision. But if you're not expanding overseas, then are you looking at grabbing a larger piece of the pie? So that is that India? is the focus area, right? Mm. So on the basically uh, retail side, right? Mm. So our platform is already the largest uh, retailing platform, mm. Mm. right? So we already have a leadership there. Okay. Our uh, B2B vertical is also mm. like mm. catching up and scaling uh, very fast. So our focus, we believe that, uh, you know, uh, Indian market is uh, is, is uh, big and uh, and growing at a crazy pace. Mm -hmm. So opportunities five years, 10 years, 15 years down the line will be significantly bigger okay. than what we see today. Mm. So keep building a basically really solid and compelling mm. brand and mm -hmm. uh, having our basically roots really entrenched. This is, is very critical going forward. So yes. we don't want any distractions. So we want to remain focused mm. on the Indian opportunity. Yeah. And that is how we have been operating. Sure. Now, when you uh, talk about the penetration of the market, you know, and you compare it to more evolved and developed markets like a uh, US, where the used car market, if you look at the ratio, for every one new car sold, there are about 2.3 uh, right. you know, used cars sold. What yes. is that ratio here in India? What at is the, the moment, that sell? ratio is close to 1.2, 1.3. Mm. And... Uh, the car sales uh, is a function of economic growth also, mm -hmm. right? We are very excited that with time, the way Indian economy is growing, uh, car uh, basically per capita, personal passenger car mm -hmm. penetration mm -hmm. will keep going up. Sure. Right? And for every new car sold, I think very soon we are going to see 
to use car transactions for every new household. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Uh, now, looking at your journey also, you know, so far, uh, I think you've raised a significant amount of capital, uh, over $500 million. Uh, how do you believe you are creating value for both investors and the stakeholders? And, you know, the ultimate uh, thing that people look forward to, any plans of an IPO as well? So, we don't have uh, basically a uh, clearly defined uh, timeline for the mm -hmm. IPO yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, whenever we raised money, mm -hmm. our pitch to our investors was that uh, it's a big opportunity, yeah. big market, mm -hmm. and uh, it will keep growing at a significant pace. And uh, But at the same time, it's completely broken, fully unorganized. Mm -hmm. Customers like face lots of problems. So there is a clear opportunity to solve their pain points mm. and if you're able to solve their pain points then a big brand and the and, and a big business outcome can be created sure everybody was like aligned with that approach mm -hmm. they just wanted to be sure that whatever we are like you know whatever we are claiming about the kind of work mm. we are doing or mm. we, we are wanting to do how much is that you know, basically true yeah. on the ground right mm. we believe that uh, you know we have been very true to our promise not just to our customers but mm. to our investors also when we raised our first institutional round, mm. right, uh, we were hardly doing uh, 80 cars a month. Okay. Right. We have since then mm. we have already like uh, given close to 100x growth mm -hmm. in the business, mm -hmm. right? And uh, IPO and uh, exits and all those are like you know just byproducts of the good execution. Sure. Good execution is something that we can like really control, mm -hmm. and that is where we focus. So Neeraj, if you were to sum it up, you know what you've built so far. How do you believe you've created disruption enough to sort of impact the ecosystem and how have you shaken things up? Of course, we talked about the benefits that, mm. you know, the customers and, and basically the buyers and sellers are getting. Yeah, right? yeah. They're able to transact confidently, seamlessly. They're able to get, you know, uh, fair pricing. Mm. So lots of benefits for them. But yeah. if I talk about other stakeholders in the ecosystem, also mm. like other players, unorganized players, semi-organized players. So it's a win-win for everybody, right? Because uh, the kind of behavior change that we are driving. We talked about fixed pricing models. Mm. So there are lots of initiatives from our side and we kind of established those practices in the market. Mm. And uh, that that uh, increases overall trust in the market and the disruption mm. that we have like brought to the market mm. is a great example of, you know, net net uh, positive sum outcome for the entire ecosystem. Sure. Great to see you, you know, build such a customer centric business and scale. Thank you so much. Thanks, Yoni. Thanks a lot for yeah. coming here and covering us.